all know that Viacom, now named Viacom CBS, the major media company behind MTV, Nickelodeon, and Paramount, has been pushing hard for new regulations of online communications, i.e. SOPA, PIPA, and secretive trade agreements like ACTA and TPP. However, I think that before they start asking for any kind of communications regulation, they should take a look at their own compliance with regulations of their own kind of communications. I'm not talking here about their hypocrisy in stealing YouTube videos while accusing YouTube of stealing their videos. Yes, I bellowed, Viacom. Why the Paramount Pictures are you stealing our YouTube videos? It's our videos, not yours, you the mess. You call us a dumbass one more time, Viacom, and we'll throw a bomb at you. None of your business, you dumbass or we will call the FBI to send you to jail. Do you hear us? Ouch. You 15-year-old California corporation, watch it. Oh no, not a bomb. I'm not even talking about the unrelenting promotion of copyright infringement and tools to do so by the CNET division of CBS, their sister company, which is now named Viacom CBS also. I'm not talking about copyright at all here. I'm talking about simple violations of communications regulations enforced in the United States. Exhibit A. Paramount Pictures' Relationship with National Amusements In 1994, Paramount Communications was acquired by the old Viacom, including Paramount Pictures, a major movie studio, as the old Viacom was a subsidiary of National Amusements, this practically made the movie studio a direct affiliate to National Amusements theater chains. That's odd. After the Supreme Court ruling of the United States vs. Paramount Pictures, Inc. in 1948, Paramount and the seven other major studios had to divest themselves in their theater chains on antitrust grounds. Now studying this case more closely, it's possible to see that technically affiliating between a studio and a theater chain isn't forbidden, but decrees were made that forced the studios to sell off their theaters and the fact that the titular defendant happened to be the only one to eventually become affiliated with the theater chain again strikes me as odd. Between 2012 and December 4th, 2019, Paramount Pictures continued to be owned by the new Viacom, still a subsidiary of National Amusements. Anyway, enough about that. Now, let's move on to... Drumroll, please. That's right. Exhibit B. The CBS-UPN Connection In 1941, the FCC passed regulations that effectively banned the owning of more than one network by a single company because NBC had been using its blue network, this mother competition against its more popular red network. In 1943, the Supreme Court upheld these regulations after they were challenged by NBC, resulting in the 1945 sell-off of the Blue Network and its subsequent renaming to ABC. Over the years, these shame broadcasting regulations were changed and, for radio, were all repealed by 1977. However, they remain for television. In 1996, the regulation was relapsed so the TV network owners were allowed to start up a second network, but not acquiring an established one. And what did Viacom do? In 2000, despite already owning 50% of the United Paramount network, they merged with CBS Corporation, acquiring the CBS television network. 
but it's only 50%, you say. Well, I'm not familiar with the nitty-gritty of the ranks, but shortly afterwards, Viacom bought out its partner's stake in UPN, so even if the earlier CBS acquisition wasn't a violation, this buyout certainly was. In 2004, the networks were tied even more closely together when Viacom merged a handful of its companies into the CBS Paramount Network Television Entertainment Group. This went on until 2006, when CBS Corporation merged UPN with Time Warner's WB to form the joint venture known as the CW. As well as that, the ONO owned and operated stations of these networks in some areas became duopolies after the acquisition. They had an overlapping broadcast range and were owned by the same company. As it says on Wikipedia, this was the death knell for the FCC's rules that prohibited such duopolies. That's right, these duopolies were operated in praise and disregard for the anti-duopoly rule. Luckily, for Viacom at least, the next year the regulation was relapsed with a few exceptions added. Still though, the corporation led the governing body which started to defeat the purpose of having regulators in the first place. But the new Viacom and their sister CBS, both of which are now named Viacom CBS, still think that they can waltz into a new communication medium that they barely understand and demand crushing ranks. We knew they're hypocrites, but I think this particular bit of hypocrisy fell below many people's radar. Thank you.